See, Samsung was smart because they put their name on the inside of the door as well. That way, when the door is inevitably lost, your name is still there. All right, this is me still going through that pile of machines I picked up a while ago. I didn't think this one has screws in it. Or maybe I took them out at some point. This looks like a fairly basic model. It's missing the front door, which will drive me nuts. Two head model, some gears. I actually, this is mostly gears. I bet you there's a belt on the bottom, but feels good. Let's uh, see if it even turns on. It doesn't, but I think I heard a hum. Ooh, yes. I can hear the transformer humming. Okay, so no power. Is there an STK? Oh no, is that an STK? No, those are individual, okay. Well, let's check the fuses first. All right, um, fuses were good. So I've gone ahead and just taking all the screws out, taking the front cover off, whatever, let's just jump right in. The screws all made a satisfying pop sound when I undid them, so this has never been opened. Although, I found where the screws for the outside cover were, in this little baggie, kind of on the side here. I don't think this is something I would have done. I think someone else did this. This just, I would have used a crappy kitchen Ziploc, this fancy professional looking one. Uh, anyway, since this is a linear power supply, I'm just going to take it out as is and see what it's doing. Wow, this is a really simple power supply. I think more of the regulation is actually happening on that main board. This is just a real, real simple thing. So there's a 10 pin connector here and I went and mapped out what each voltage should be based on my measurements. So one and two right here go directly to this winding, which is about four volts AC, completely isolated. Then this one here goes to pin three, from the looks of it, yes. And the uh, complementary pin for that winding is tied to ground. So this is your resistor going to neutral that then goes up through these two windings to ground to the ground plane and that measures about 30 volts ac reference to ground pins four and nine are tied to said ground and then we have a bunch of regulated voltages so this 12 volt regulator here um, is actually turned on and off with a voltage from the main board so when you power on the VCR, then it turns on this 12 volt regulator. So the six volts here, this is a 7806, I believe. Uh, dude. Yeah, LM7806. That provides probably the standby voltage, or maybe it's regulated out of this four volts, I don't know. And then this is a four pin 12 volt regulator, this sharp guy here that actually has a on pin, that's the fourth pin. And then your 7815. So 7815 creates the 15 volts. The 12 volt regulator, not sure if it's working because it's not gonna get the power on signal, but this six volt regulator appears to not be working. The input pin is measured at one volt and the output pin is measured at zero. So that one volt is probably the drop across an otherwise shorted regulator. So I'm just gonna pull that out I'm gonna pull it out from here and then see if I can get like around a probably a seven volt unregulated DC on the input pin of this here. All right, um, I have removed, let's see here, had to remove this filtering capacitor in order to get this regulator out. So without the filtering cap, I'm actually getting voltage now which is about is 5.6 volts average with a 1.6 volt ripple on the top there. So yeah, that, that seems about right. What's interesting is if I pull this fuse out, I get like 8.4 volt half wave 
So this little tiny ceramic capacitor is actually doing quite a bit of heavy lifting right now. Uh, anyway, I think that tells me, at least I think, let's unplug, have it in an isolation transformer just to be safe, but this thing's so fucking loud. It scares me every time I plug it in. Yeah, don't like that. Anyway, I think this 7806 is shorted. But where am I going to find a 7806? That's very uncommon. I'm hoping that this power supply is regulated and has a little 6 volt regulator inside. So let's pop this open and see. Actually, no, let's plug it in and measure it first. Nope, unregulated. Dang it. Huh. Well, actually, this 7806 is working fine. Feeding it 8 volts and I'm getting 6 volts out. So something else is either shorted or, I don't know, maybe this uh, winding is messed up. Hmm. I don't get it. When I have zero load, so if I pull this fuse out, then I can see the sort of 10 volts, whatever, two spikes, you know, the full rectification of these two diodes. Uh, if I put the fuse in, but I don't have the 7806 or the capacitor, I can see sort of a, a 10 volts with a little bit of a sawtooth on top being smoothed out by this capacitor here. Now, if I put just the capacitor in, it drops to almost nothing. And if I put this in, then it's just, it's just gone. So is the problem these diodes? Like can bad diodes operate that way? The only other possibility is that this transformer is pooched. Well, I'll be damned. It was the diodes. So I just put two scrap beefy uh, rectifier diodes from some other power supply in here. Now, if we go and take a look at the positive unregulated side, we got like 11 volts. And if we take a look at the regulated side of the 7806, we have 6 volts. So those diodes seem to work with no load, but as soon as any load got put on, they just opened up. I don't think I've really ever seen that before, but again, again, I don't have a lot of experience with this stuff, failure modes. I always thought they just completely opened up or shorted, but uh, all right. All right, here goes nothing. I have it precariously sitting on its side because these diodes stick out. And this is just for testing. If this works, I'll find some proper rectifier diodes. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Okay. Will you take a tape? Oh, so far so good that sound do I have it plugged into the right port maybe there now I do ah. holy crap it's working great now I've done nothing to this I haven't cleaned any of the transport I Is that, is that times two? That's weird. When you press play, it does that. Hey, look. Oh. Look at that head switching. I don't see any times two, but it, it does. Times two. Looks like ass, though. Actually, you know what? All things considered, this is a two head model. So, yeah, no, there we go. I think it's going between the two fields. Is there a pause? No, I guess we get no pause. We just get an undocumented times two that sort of works. Okay, let's hit stop. That was it, I guess. 
I didn't know diodes could fail that way. Uh, by the way, I've got the other ones pulled up, one leg on either side pulled up. So these aren't just bridging existing diodes, they're in circuit by themselves. Well, let's uh, try an EP recording. I mean, it should play just fine. It's two heads that plays the SP, unless there's some weird servo problem, like that stupid Panasonic, then it should be fine. Play. Yeah. Just peachy. Sounds like you'd expect from an SLP recording. Now, there's not much that can be tried with this because I don't really have the remote. Apparently it's got on-screen programming. You know, I think I'm actually gonna have to order some diodes. Uh, this, <laughs> these diodes I put in temporarily, I thought they were from a rectifier circuit. They're like shot key diodes. Before I go and put in the new diodes, of which I ordered and of which have arrived, I kind of wanted to show a symptom that I had noticed and I had kind of glossed over. What you're seeing right here are both sides of a sine wave being rectified, right? You have two diodes and the way this works is they're basically each rectifying the opposite phase from the um, secondary winding. There's two different secondary windings and they're coming from opposite phases, I think. I don't know, it seems like a way to do full wave rectification, but with just two diodes. And you're just using two windings on the transformer. Anyway, oh wow, they're really dancing now. What I was seeing, I wasn't seeing so much dancing, but I was seeing one of the waves. Oh, maybe I should unplug this. They seem to be growing. Oh yeah. 12 volts peak to peak, 6.8 volts average. Okay, maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, one of them was really small and one of them was really large. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why would you take two different voltages off two different windings and combine them together to get some like weird average? Wouldn't it go up and down? And it wasn't until later when I was troubleshooting and I realized it was these. I was like, oh yeah, one of them has a more uh, higher forward voltage than the other, and they're both fat, obviously. As soon as you put any load, they just open up. But I yeah, just wanted to show that that was an interesting symptom, it was having unstable rectification or, you know, unstable uh, waveforms since they're both coming through different diodes and they're both acting differently, and yet both failed. Oh, good. It appears to be working fine with the new replacement diodes tacked in there. The other ones worked fine too. The it's the regulated voltage going in is about 11 and a half volts and then 7806 it's a nice clean 6 volts going out. Same as those beefy ones. It's just they're not the right ones. Those are shot keys and I don't know enough to know why I wouldn't want to use them. I thought the drop the voltage drop would be different, but it's the same, so who knows. Um but these are the proper regulating diodes so if i'm i'm probably not going to keep this thing i'd rather put the correct components in than components i've salvaged from something and these were like 20 cents each so it just it makes sense to use the correct the correct parts you know now for actually properly installing these diodes i'm pre-cutting them and then sort of placing them in here with some needle nose because they have to kind of go under the uh, focus under the transformer in there so there done i will just putting it back together and figured i would take a look underneath make sure everything looks to be in good shape and it is this belt is remarkably in good shape i mean it's got a bit of stretch to it but like it, if i spin both sides it's got a lot of torque to it so it's fine everything looks clean there's no old grease gummed up in here any of this blue grease looks great it's perfectly fine now the question of mode switch will come up um i'm of the opinion that if this is showing no weird issues especially after having sat for a while it's probably fine 
Um, there are certain models that are kind of known for it, like those newer Funai's. But otherwise, think about the mode switch like a potentiometer, like a volume control. If you were given something that's 20 years old and you turn the volume control and it's not scratchy, it's only going to get better if you continue using it because you're going to clean off and move away any of the dirt or oxidization that builds up on it. So, uh, plus I don't really know how to get to it. I suspect it's probably on this circuit board here. And if I take a look down on the bottom there, you can see about four or five, is that four? Five uh, pins down there. And that's sitting right on top of this big gear. So I suspect, oh, there's even like an alignment mark there. I suspect it's sandwiched underneath this motor. Looks like a pain in the butt to get to. I'm not gonna touch it. Maybe I'll remove this uh, head cleaner. That's actually another thing. I always remove them just because the internet says, hey, they can turn to goo. I've only seen that happen on one particular brand, Toshiba 90s VCRs. They used a particular type of foam that would kind of destabilize and turn to goo, not unlike some of the belts that you see in some machines. But every other brand, and this is a Samsung, Samsung included, it holds up just fine. Maybe at some point it'll fall apart, but for now it's still going fine. Anyway, vote in the comments whether I should remove it or keep it. I could go either way on this. All right, have it partially put back together. Let's just go over the functionality so we can experience together what a boring VCR this is. Now, when I looked this model up online, there was no information at all. And this is just such a bog standard. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually seems quite nice, perfectly functional, but there's just, there's no information on it at all. Uh, luckily there's a date code right there, 1992. So this, at least this part here, it's manufactured February 17th, 1992. Anyway, let's use the trusty Harmony remote to turn it on. There we go. The channel display is a little bit awkward to look at from above, but I've got control of that. Tuner seems to work just fine. I can go down to all my usual channels seems to work just fine um now for actual control that you have on the remote but not here i don't have a speed button on this harmony so i don't know if it supports lp for recording i would assume it does but i guess we'll just never know tv vcr is you know modulator on and off makes sense uh, input next switches between line and channel which is useful because I don't think, yeah, you can't get to it. So you need the remote to be able to go to the line in. So that's useful. Uh, program, which is your menu only for clock set and uh, timer programs though. So let's go and set the clock. One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two. Wednesday, push end to program, oh no. I don't think I have an end button. If I just hit program. Well, that worked too. Okay. I guess program and end must be the same button because uh, it's programmed now. What else can I do? Normal program. Program number. Okay, so it's got eight different programs. I don't really care enough to continue. Daily program, weekly program, and then program review, of which there are none, so it's not doing anything. The last button that this remote has says TV video, which I thought was odd because you already have TV VCR and you already have uh, input select. But what it does, oh, let's get out of this. When I hit it, is it switches to cable. So now, uh, come on, stay focused. I have 125 channels. So this is be, would, would have been what they sell as a 181 channel tuner you have. This is the kind of stuff I grew up with. It was very bog standard. So really that's the only functionality you have. I suspect the remote probably had the speed button. And I think there was one other button that I couldn't find on here. Auto program. 
So add delete channels. That's probably something on there that I don't have. Oh well. Let's test out some tapes. First up, an LP report recording. Simply because I always get asked about LP whenever I show a VCR. The ignored middle child speed. There you go, there's LP. So let's pause. Actually, that's really good for LP. I'll go fast forward. Wow. Okay, so it's using the big boy heads for this. Oh wait, it's only two head, of course. Yeah, perfectly fine. Rewind. It's doing exactly the thing it should do. Next, let's try something silly. Let's put in an SVHS tape. Oh yeah. It's having a bit of trouble there. So let's rewind a little bit and see what the SP looks like. Huh. Yeah, this is very, very similar to the VCRs I, I, I remember using in the mid to late 90s. So Samsung had this as early as 1992. <laughs> oh yeah. At least the speed is stable. Wait, what? What? That actually looks not half bad. I mean, there's still quite a bit of drop out there, but... Hmm. All right, on to the next tape. How about a PAL tape? I don't expect, I mean, the video head drum is gonna be at a different speed, so it's not. I'm trying to slow this down a little bit to see if I can see anything. Look at that. Oh, it faulted out. So PAL is 1500 RPM that the video head drum spins at. And NTSC is 1800 RPM and it's to do with the 50 and 60 fields per second difference as well as the videotape speed and all that. So anytime you put a PAL tape into an NTSC only VCR, you're not even gonna see anything because this is spinning at the wrong speed. You're just gonna see a bunch of angled lines. But as you just saw, I can slow this video head down and you can get a picture. So theoretically, if you were able to get this to spin at 1500 RPM, you could get a crummy black and white picture going too quickly. So that's cool. Anyway, enough of that silliness. Um, I think that's about all there is to see with this uh, 1992 Samsung VHS VCR. It's a perfectly cromulent machine for watching your tapes. See ya.